All right. This lesson is lesson 4.2. Um, it's called Constant Rates of Change. We are in module four, which is in the next unit, unit two, and unit two is on rates and proportional relationships. And we're on a lesson called Constant Rates of Change. So let's talk about proportional relationships. A proportion, a proportion is a statement that the two rates or ratios are equivalent. Okay, so in a proportion, you're gonna have two ratios and the proportion says they are equivalent. Here is an example. If you ride your bike six miles in two hours, actually you could probably walk six miles in two hours, that is the equivalent of walking three miles in one hour. Okay, we have two ratios, six to two and three to one, and they're equivalent. We just wrote a proportion, okay? A proportion is a statement that says two rates or ratios are equivalent. And that is, is an example right there of a proportion. All right. Now, let's talk about proportional relationships. Two quantities have a proportional relationship if they have a constant rate of change. We're going to get rid of that right there. Okay. Two quantities have a proportional relationship if they have a constant rate of change. What does that mean? So in the example, I'm going to show you how to take a table and figure out with the table, is the relationship proportional based on the rate of change? Okay, so here is our example. It says, Khalil and Sunny dog sitting. Based on the table, is there a proportional relationship between the money he earns and the number of days? So we know that the, the, the relationship will be proportional. The answer will be yes if the table has a constant rate of change. So let's figure out how do we find the rate of change. Okay. So step number one. We are going to find all of the rates. So we're going to write the rate. That's step number one. Okay. So you learned in lesson 4.1 write right, a word ratio. So we're going to do dollars per day. Okay. Because we have number of days, one day, $16, two days, $36, three days, $48. Four days, sixty-four dollars. Five days, eighty dollars. So we want to know dollars per day. How much money does he make each day that he works? So we're going to write each day. We've got sixteen dollars for one day. We've got thirty-two dollars for two days. We've got forty-eight dollars for three days. We have sixty-four dollars for four days. And we have eighty dollars. Okay, those are all of the rates. If we do that math, and remember, you are allowed to use your calculator in this unit. So if we take out our calculators and we do the math, and we do sixteen divided by one, we get sixteen. If we do thirty-two divided by two, we get sixteen. If we divide 48 divided by 3, we get 16. If we do 64 divided by 4, we get 16. And if we do 80 divided by 5, we get 16. Okay? So we basically found the rates for every relationship or every ratio on the table. Step number two. So here's step one. Right here. Here's step two. Step two is to compare the rates.
Now you can see they're all the same. If the rate of change is the same for every ratio, then you have a constant rate of change. Constant means it stays the same. The, the amount of change from one day to the next stays the same. So for day one, it's 16. For, for two days, it's still $16 per day. For three days, it's still $16 per day. For four days, it's still $16 per day. So no matter how many days Khalil works, he always makes $16 per day. OK, so that means the rate of change is constant. If the rate of change is, is constant, then the relationship is proportional. OK, so in this case, we're going to say the rate of change is constant. Therefore, the relationship is proportional. <laughs> OK. So now you know how to find the rate of change. And you know that if the rate of, if even if one of these was not 16, then it would not be constant. So it only takes one. It can they can all be 16 except for one. As soon as you have one that's not the same, you do not have a proportional relationship. OK, so now let's talk about writing an equation. For a proportional relationship. So in the problem above. OK, and I'm going to try to keep it on the screen as much as I can. In the problem above, the number of days is the independent variable. Now, independent means it's going to happen on its own. And days, the number of days, days go by no matter what. You, nothing has to happen for a day to happen, right? Nothing has to happen first. So the days are independent. They're going to happen on their own. Days are going to come and go no matter what, right? However, the amount of money earned is dependent on the days, okay? So the independent variable in the problem is days. Days happen on their own. They're independent. The independent variable is the variable. So this is OK. So you want to think about that as going on the. All right. Now, the amount of money is the dependent variable. Because the amount of money Khalil makes depends on how many days he works, right? So he doesn't make any money at all if he doesn't work any days. So he has to work the days first, and then he makes the money. So think about the independent variable happening first, causing the dependent variable to happen. So the day worked happens first, and then the money is made. So the independent variable happens first, the dependent variable happens next. So the, the dependent variable is the I variable. Okay. So we're going to say the amount of money earned is Y. Okay. Number of days is X. Amount of money earned is Y. So notice we put 16 over 1, 32 over, I mean 32 over 2, 48 over 3. Every single time we're putting Y, the Y value, over the x value. We're putting the y value on top of the x value. Okay. And then we got 16 every time that we did that. We did y over x, y over x, y over x, y over x. So y on top, x on bottom. Y on top, x on bottom. Right. And every time we did that, we got 16. So if the relationship between x and y, right down here, if the relationship between x and y is proportional, The relationship can be described with this equation. Y equals K times X. That is the equation for a proportional relationship between X and Y. Now, what the heck is this K letter? Okay, the very 
variable k is called the constant of proportion. Okay, big giant word for basically telling you the rate of change. If the rate of change is constant, which it was up here, we got 16 every time. If the rate of change is constant, we call that the constant of proportionality. And the letter that stands for that is K. All right, so let's, so if we say that Y equals K times X, then K equals Y divided by X. That's what we did up here. Every single time we did Y divided by X, Y divided by X, Y divided by X, and we got the same number, we got 16. So when you do Y divided by X, and you get the same number over and over and over again, you have a constant of proportionality, which we give the letter K. Why, it is, why we give it K, I don't know really because the constant starts with a C, but we, we give it the letter K, okay? Now, so in the table above, okay, in the table above, the constant of proportionality, or K, is 16, okay? So for your practice, you're going to be looking at tables and you're going to be finding out, is this a proportional relationship in the table or not? Again, if you do Y divided by X, Y divided by X, Y divided by X, and you get the same number every time, then you have a proportional relationship. The answer will be yes, the relationship is proportional. And if it asks you what is the constant of proportionality, it is whatever number you got over and over and over again, when you divided y divided by x, y divided by x. If you get a different number and it's not the same every time, then the answer is no, you do not have a proportional relationship and there will not be a constant of proportionality because k, the, the, diff, the change will be different every time. So you won't have a constant number, okay? So go ahead and move on to your IXLs and your HMH and your paper practice. If you need help, let me know in class. And that is your lesson 4.2, Constant Rates of Change.